Attention ladies and gentlemen, Gungans and droids across the galaxy. This is your Grand Admiral Otto, direct at the Video Gaming Division here at the what? Galactic Empire. That is right. Today's video is probably a video I have so much excitement to talk about today. And that is in regards to literally the Empire's finest, all of our lovely gals and men standing on the front lines to ensure there's a bright future for our empire and citizens and of course the kyber club we're going to talk about if a way or a team i should say that in my opinion helped me become undefeated in grand arena this past month now you might be saying oh i don't you've got galactic legends that's gotta be the reason why let me tell you chief keep almost every single one of our opponents had a galactic legend and a lot of them had both galactic legends and who came victorious in the end we did and it's because in my humble opinion these Imperial Troopers are being severely overlooked. And because of this project, we started about a month ago. We started off by just doing a Relic 7 Stormtrooper. By the way, the fastest and highest health and protection combined in this galaxy right here, Mr. Gary. I have been seeing a huge movement of people following suit because they have seen Imperial Troopers kick serious butt this past Grand Arena this last month. So what we're going to talk about today is one, the Grand Arena perspective. If you're trying to get better at Grand Arena, yes, of course, having Jedi Knight, Revan, Darth, and yada, 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 that's going to help you. But really, the best way to get better at Grand Arena is making sure you stretch out your roster as much as possible. Save those top tier teams for top tier teams and save teams like Imperial Troopers to go after those choke point teams as I like to talk about in Grand Arena. Teams that can weed out a good offensive team from you or a team that can, like Imperial Troopers, punch up and stop those defensive teams so you can save your Jedi Revan, your Padme, your Grievous, whatever the case might be, so you can take on those other top tier teams. Because look at this. Here's my Grand Arena defense from this past month. And notice something. Here we have Mother Talzin. My Mother Talzin defense, what are they throwing? Jedi Knight Revan. While we, on the other hand, are throwing Imperial Troopers at it. Jedi Knight Revan, important for going after Galactic Legends. Important for stopping General Grievous. Why are you using it on a Knight Sister team? Imperial Trooper satisfies that protocol right there. Padme being used against my Mother Talzin. My opponents are throwing Darth Treya against my Knight Sisters. We have, for example, this isn't as bad throwing First Order, but they're using Separatist characters like Wat Tambor to get past simple things, in my opinion, like Knight Sisters. And same thing here. We see people using, like, for example, Boss using uh, Wat Tambor with it going up against my Knight Sisters. This is what I'm talking about. You should be saving your Wat Tambor for your Galactic Legends counters. You should be saving your Jedi Revan to go after Darthrim, to go after Galactic Legends Kylo and Rey. This is where the Imperial Troopers fit an important niche. And I don't care if you have every Galactic Legends, because let me tell you, a lot of my opponents had Galactic Legends as well when fighting against me, but I was able to stretch my roster to a better extent than they were through our Imperial Troopers. So we're going to roll some highlights of this past month of Grand Arena. Undefeated Imperial Troopers going up against Relic 7 Night Sisters. Separatists like Newt Gunray, Count Dooku. Plenty of nests being buried in the ground by our Imperial Troopers. Don't stand in our way. Imperial Troopers are going to march right over you. Let me tell you. So let's go start breaking this down because I think if you're someone that's looking to improve your Grand Arena game and you have the time and effort to divert towards a passion project, because let me tell you, you can get caught up chasing end game stuff, the newest stuff. But if you don't follow your passion and these teams that are still extremely important for things like Grand Arena, you're going to miss out on a lot. And I'm going to talk briefly at the end how they can snag you extra Zetas and they can even do some decent work in Dark Side Geonosis territory battle. So let's go start this conversation off by talking about what is the ideal team now now you have a lot of options here but in my opinion the very best team to be chasing after for your imperial troopers is going to be general veer's lead and only one zeta needed for this team through the general veer's unique ability aggressive tactician stark death trooper snow trooper and range trooper now short trooper is a fantastic character don't get me wrong but from my personal experience i want an all out offensive team and there's plenty of survivability even without short trooper i use short trooper and storm trooper for other teams like a, a, a leftover palpatine lineup or some other team that just needs a good tank but that team right there veer stark death trooper snow trooper range trooper is the core team let's break it down a little bit closer with veers veers is going to be the important person to kind of spearhead this whole entire project through both his leadership imperial assault commander and his unique ability with the zeta you need the zeta to make this work aggressive tactician 
The whole goal of Imperial Troopers is to get that train of turn meter moving. And luckily through Aggressive Tactician and his lead, he's going to help build a lot of momentum for your team. And you can start spamming out the damage. And the goal is to quickly open up with a lot of turn meter, a lot of buffs, and especially Veers' mass assist. And once you take out an enemy within the first few seconds, the train gets going and your opponents, they're not going to be able to catch up. Asaz Ventures might have a slight chance, but really, once you get going... There's just so much damage and so much turn meter that you just start running circles around your opponent. So how this works is that the uh, Imperial Assault Commander, Veer's lead, gives a little bit of extra speed, extra 20 speed, 30% offense, so you put out even more damage. And the most important thing to get us started, get this train moving, is 10% turn meter whenever they gain a buff. This is a, a great highlight, by the way. Simple lead that does so much for this team. And now, Aggressive Tactician. Once you add that Zeta, anytime you're defeating someone, this might be a little bit of a summer, but it's been a while since people actually legitimately looked at our Imperial Drippers here. You're going to get the offense up when you're defeating enemies. 50% Terminator, which is going to be amplified even more through the Snow Trooper unique ability and recover 10% protection. And of course, Ruthless Assault, you want to try to land the ability blocks as often as possible, but you especially you want to get everyone to focus fire on your target. Literally, look at your enemy, look at their mods, say, get a plan. Who are you going to take out first? You ideally want to take out the enemy character who has the least amount of health and protection. Because once you take someone out, you are golden to go. Here are the mods. Let's go showcase the mods a little closer so you can kind of see what we're working with here very briefly. We're going to go over, so let me tell you the turn order right now. The turn order you ideally want to have is Stark to go first. Stark goes, he's going to do scan all wavelengths, feed buffs. We'll talk about him in a moment. Afterwards, you're going to want to have Range Trooper go. Feed more buffs to your team. Get the Retribution, Protection, maybe call a couple of assists. Death Trooper, if he goes second, that's uh, okay too. Death Trooper going second or third is perfectly fine. Death Trooper is going to open up, increase cooldowns, and also dispel buffs. And then afterwards, it doesn't really matter. Veer is usually you want to be the third or fourth person going on the team because you want to set yourself up for a lot of buffs. Here we go. We have 284 for the speed, 304 after the lead i have a lot of speed on my team and the thing is as we're gonna see if you especially if you mod incredibly fast for your team and everyone kind of hits the 100 percent turn meter threshold at the same time so when i do my battles it's kind of a coin flip who goes first it doesn't really matter but ideally you want to have start go first as we're going to talk about now and then of course you're going to want things like death trooper and range and then veers and snow trooper to follow up so colonel Stark comes in hand with his speed you want him to be the fastest character on your team i actually have the second or third fastest colonel stark in this galaxy, you don't need to be to be, to be to be that fast. But keep in mind, the goal is to make sure your Stark is outrunning Django teams who have decent speed and Night Sister teams. If you can make sure you outrun 80% of Night Sister and Django teams, this team is going to be golden for working, uh, doing a lot of work for you in Grand Arena. So you're going to have him go first. Keep in mind the 20 extra speed on Stark lead. So right now, my Stark is 352 after the leadership kicks in you're going to want to have them open up with scan all wavelengths and boom right there stark gains five percent turn for each empire ally and each rebel enemy so base is going to be 25 percent 20 percent turn meter and he's going to feed the critical chance up critical damage up to the team and because of that veer's lead your imperial troopers are going to start off with 20 percent turn meter so that's why you don't need to have the rest of your team modded too quickly because Stark is going to feed you 20% turn meter right out the door. That is a pretty big boost of turn meter. And of course, he's got things like his buff dispel. He's got things such as the stagger application. So to remove turn meter, <laughs> when you're getting turn meter and your opponent's losing turn meter, it is pretty fantastic. The mods, again, you don't need to be too nitpicky. Speed is what you're going to want to have on your Stark all day long. I run a speed set and we also run a, uh, we also run a potency set. One, so he lands some more staggers. And secondly, I have tenacity on here. It's, again, speed is a primary concern, but I like tenacity because sometimes the enemy wants to try to stun or pull turn meter away from Stark. And if he's resisting stuns and all that stuff, you're going to keep your turn meter flowing. He's important to keep turn meter going through your team as much as possible. Primary number one thing is make sure you have yourself a lot of speed. Moving on now. Third person on this list, you're going to talk about Death Trooper. He puts out big damage. He's got so many important things. You already alluded to it earlier. You want to try to open up with Death Trooper Grenade. Ideally, you want him to go in second or third so he can go ahead and do an AoE buff the spell, get rid of taunts that are in your way, and secondly, increase cooldowns on enemies who do not have buffs on them. Terminate, don't let it fool you. Yes, it has Death Mark once you finally defeat an enemy. That's fine and dandy, but 
I find this incredibly important, especially when going after Night Sisters. I always try to use this ability as early as possible because he does massive damage at Relic 7. He does 90 to 130,000 damage on this ability, more than enough to kill off Asajj. And if you kill someone with this ability, they are not reviving so long as it's not Night Sister Zombie. So I put this in Asajj Ventures and Asajj Ventures. She is gone. She cannot be revived. And against the Night Sister team, she is the absolute biggest threat now here's where the survivability comes in not just through the health protection recovery through the veer's unique ability and whatnot but we have 10 percent health steal through krennic's guard that is great and plus a lot of the relics these imperial troopers they amplify their health steal even more so yes short troopers cool and all but there's plenty of health recovery on this team with health steal health steal plus massive damage equals a lot of healing you don't have to worry too much about that and of course the basic applies dazes slowing down the enemy team and it can also potentially turn into a stun showing you the mods for death trooper we have some decent speed on him critical damage critical chance because he hits pretty hard and then we have some critical damage here potency on this cross is probably important because occasionally you're going to come across a nest and you'd love to try to get a daze on her daze on nest means it's going to be a good day you can still beat nest as we've seen plenty of times in this footage even without applying a daze and a stun but adding potency is going to ensure it happens a little more frequently now let's talk about range trooper oh boy randy right here we have names to all of our troopers here at the empire really two things about uh, our boy randy right here steady this allows you to get more buffs and fill deck like i said stark has to go first has to mandatory and then a uh, you know, death trooper or randy can kind of go second right there but really stark and following up with randy right here with steady you're feeding retribution and protection up to your team two more buffs so between the stark using a scan all wavelengths and steady you're starting off with 40 percent turn meter for your imperial troopers so that's why you kind of want to make sure if you only if you only have so much speed to spare putting it on stark and putting it on range trooper is probably the safest bet to go because that's enough turn meter to outrun most teams assuming you, you gave stark enough speed to open up and of course power and numbers is incredibly important because this allows you to call attacks out of turn again more damage coming out of your team more chance to, to, to defeat that first enemy and subsequent enemies to keep you need to make sure that turn meter train keep rolling non-stop showing the mods real quick again you try it i mean the number one concern for this guy is gonna be speed because you want him opening up with as much turn meter for your team as possible and if you can start off with retribution at the beginning fantastic because eventually let's say mother talisman she's going to want to hit you with an aoe or somebody's going to throw up an aoe and when mother talisman throws up an aoe you're basically guaranteed to counterattack and at least kill someone off to keep your train moving they give you so many tools to make sure you have a perpetual cycle of terminator now lastly we got our boy right here here he is right here my people if you only have enough to relic one imperial trooper because i understand relic up imperial troopers probably should not be the number one thing on your to-do list because you you still want to chase after those some of those top teams you need to have a good balance of top teams and teams that can help you uh support those top teams i.e imperial troopers taking out those other teams so your good teams can focus fire some of us but if you only had enough resource to go after one imperial trooper for the relic relic seven snow trooper is honestly so dang good you've seen him do ninety thousand plus on his basic ability which also applies ability block mind you which is always helpful and this is incredibly important because especially when you're doing the dance with the devil as i like to call it when you're going up against nest when nest drops off her protection you need to make sure someone with a big hit whether it be death trooper or snow trooper puts in the final nail so you don't keep dancing with her because when she stacks up her, her protection it gets a little scary but with snow trooper having a huge a a aoe and basic ability you can take out nest with no problem whatsoever and then of course overwhelming assault puts out massive amounts of damage 40 50 60 70 80 thousand damage back to back to back to back to back to back it's great every time you're landing critical hits you're reducing the cooldowns of overwhelming assault which 95 percent of the time you're gonna always be spamming this ability every single time he gets a turn and assault training my gosh incredibly important as well because he's getting 30 percent turn meter anytime a unit is being defeated ally or foe and then he's feeding 15 percent turn meter to the rest of his imperial friends and of course you're getting extra critical damage through his unique ability to feed to your imperial troopers so you're putting out even more damage this character don't gotta worry too much about speed he's gonna get plenty of turn meter through the stark range trooper feeding buffs veer's uh, unique ability the the leadership ability he wanted to be as high damage as possible we have an offense arrow right here we have critical damage right here more offense this is how he's able to hit for crazy amounts of damage you want to make sure he's constantly hitting aoe's because against a lot of teams like night sisters they hate heavy aoe's and it gets around all those disgusting taunts 
fantastic character. And this is where your Relic 7, if you only had enough for one Relic 7, that's the place to put it. Ladies and gentlemen, these characters are just an absolute blast. They are incredibly important for helping you save your Jedi. So you don't have to go up against nice Super Jedi, your Galactic Republic, your Treya, because you need to make sure you stretch those top tier teams to go up against those other top tier teams. And your Imperial Troopers have enough firepower and Termeter to handle those pesky bound hitters. That saves you a Commander Luke Skywalker right there. Takes out those Knight Sisters, takes out those random Separatist teams, and a bunch of other stuff. Now, of course, don't expect Imperial Troopers to take out like Padme, Jedi Knight Revan Potential, and of course, Galactic Legends. That's not where their niche is. Their niche is to help you weed out those choke point teams in Galaxy Heroes. And just kind of an added bonus. If you're trying to get extra Zetas, you got the Rebel Roundup. I'm able to three-star Rebel Roundup even without the Relic 7 Imperial Troopers. We've gone crazy with our Relic 7s on these Imperial Troopers. You don't need it, but it's just so much fun for me personally. And of course, you have that Forest Moon event that gives you more Zetas and Relic materials. So those Challenge Tiers, they take out two Challenge Tiers. And I've also gotten some okay use out of them. In Dark Side Geonosis Territory Battles, we've been able to get at least three out of four in the phase four missions. You take out one character and then once they get going, holy cow, it starts rolling until you run into a Padme or a Shock T of that sort. So ladies and gentlemen, moral of the story, I know Imperial Troopers are not a new faction in the game. It's a faction I feel like a lot of people have been neglecting for the past couple of years because we've been caught up with Relics, Gear 13, all these latest and greatest characters. But at the end of the day, we play Galaxy of Heroes because we're sentimental about the, 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 the Star Wars universe. We have characters that we align with. We have characters that we remember growing up and enjoying them. And for me personally, I just love seeing the Imperial glory at its finest. Find a passion project. If you have the time, highly recommend trying to look into a team of yours. So if it's bounty hunters, go for bounty hunters. Bounty hunters can do almost the same thing as Imperial Troopers. I think Imperial Troopers have the upper hand though. <laughs> Thanks anyways, guys, for hanging out with us. Hopefully this video is gonna be helpful, inspirational, and kind of gives you at least overall advice how to do better in Grand Raider. If you're not using Imperial Troopers, find yourself another team that's gonna help you weed out those Night Sisters, Bounty Hunters, whatever the case might be, so you can get better at Grand Arena and saving your Jedi, your Padme, your Treyas against more top end teams. Like if you enjoyed the video, comment down below on all your thoughts, and be sure to subscribe so you're not missing a thing and all the fun we're having here at the Kyber Club. And I'll see all you lovely people in the next video. Peace out, everyone. Gary, roll out the outro. Roll out the outro. Almost there, Gary. Roll out the outro. Uh, Gary, there you go. You're such a good boy. <laughs>